Garrett stood in silence. The afternoon skies overhead had since cleared away into the deep purples and velvety blacks of nightfall. He hadn't slept that day. And how could he? How did one find rest after the turmoil of emotions he had just gone through? Try as he had, he could not pry Guinevere from his thoughts. The way she had looked into his eyes, with utmost trust and affection. Her soft, but heavy moans, as he taught her the meaning of pleasure. The sensation of her smooth hands against his own flesh. The thief squeezed his eyes shut, trying to make sense of it all. What had he done? Garrett smirked in the darkness. He knew perfectly well what he had done. The real question was why had he done it. Answers would have to wait, at least for the moment. In his mind, he knew that he had to maintain a professional relationship with Guinevere. It was for his own good. And hers. Garrett sighed and descended the stairway of the clock tower. Past where Guinevere had slept for the past two months, and towards his bed. His empty, lonely bed. This would be the first night in years, in which he had tried to sleep. Garrett shed his cloak and began to undress. As he laid down upon the mattress, a long red hair caught his eye. He picked it up between his fingers, and frowned. Laying his face into the pillow, the forlorn man inhaled deeply. Was it just his desperate imagination? Or did he smell more of Guinevere than he did himself upon those filthy sheets? Garrett forced himself to sit up again. His mind became awash with images of the young Simmons girl. She now sat on the corner of his bed, her legs spread. She gazed at him coyly, with her green eyes, beckoning him closer. Her full breasts made his mouth begin to water, when he saw how hard her nipples were. They were dusky rose red. And the peaks were prominent. He remembered how they felt in his mouth, when he swirled his tongue around them, and how she had shrieked in pleasure at the new sensation. Her long red locks cascaded over her breasts, but revealed more than they concealed. Garrett shook his head. He couldn't get her out of his mind. She was positively everywhere. Was he losing his mind? Was he sick? First, he saw Erin in the graveyard, then there were his almost constant night terrors. Now this. Now he was seeing Guinevere nude upon his bed as if she were really there. I have to go and talk to someone about this. Barso looked up through sips and smiled at the sight of his old friend approaching him. Garrett, finally decided to come and be sociable, eh? He raised his glass in greetings before finishing the rest of his beer. Garrett groaned as he sat down across from the boxman. What's up? Where's Guinevere? She's on her own now. Barso stared at him. Just like that? She's only been under your instruction for a few months. Don't get me wrong, I know you're a good teacher and all, but are you sure she's ready? Garrett sighed heavily as he gazed out the window through lost eyes. To tell you the truth, not entirely. Barso had known Garrett for many years, more than long enough to spot the signs that something was amiss. Garrett? What happened? He encouraged. The thief returned his friend's gaze, giving him a slight but telling grin. Barso boomed with laughter. <laughs> you didn't, you sly dog. He slapped the thief across the back. So, what was it like? Better than you could possibly imagine. 
She's an amazing woman. Garrett replied solemnly. Barso nodded, his gaze growing serious. I see. Haven't heard you talk that way about a gal before. Sounds a bit like the way I used to brag about my Genevieve. Before she and I had our little falling out, that is. It's not like that, Basso, I assure you. I'm not going to marry her. Who said anything about that? I need to talk to you about something. Basso reclined back in the booth. Oh? I... I need to consider the possibilities of... calling her back. Of keeping her with me. <laughs> Are you really serious? Barso asked sternly. Garrett shot him an inquisitive glare. Of course I am. You think that I would joke about this? The thief exclaimed. Barso shook his head. No, no. I know you're not the type of man to joke around. I've been trying to loosen you up for years in that regard. But Guinevere... I thought you said you didn't do relationships. I'm willing to make an exception in her case. Garrett, listen. Guinevere, she's a great kid. She's sweet, spunky, she's got an arseload of money, amazing set of tits. Barso stopped short when he noticed the hard scowl on Garrett's face. But all that aside, I don't think you realize what you're saying. Even though she's all of those things and more, she's also still a noble. We only agreed to help her to obtain access to the Simmons family vault. Once she gives me that, we're done with her. It hurts me as much as it hurts you, mate. But let's face it, the gal could spell serious trouble for us. And we've already been playing with fire as it is, simply by just keeping her around. If she were to stay with you and the watch found out, Garrett, you know as well as I what the end result would be. You'd be hung for kidnapping her, among other things. Vaso reasoned. So long as I keep her away from them, that would never happen. Garrett retorted. Garrett, if a low-life scoundrel like you keeps this thing going with Master Simmons' daughter, then you're as good as a walking corpse. You had your fun with her, but it's time to let her go. It ain't personal, just business. If she cares for you, she'll understand that. I can handle my own affairs, Basso. Garrett snapped. As you always do. I just don't want you to get in over your head. You sometimes do have a tendency to bite off more than you can chew. Basso raised his hand to a nearby waitress, who filled his empty glass full of bubbling ale. Now let's change the subject, alright? Garrett's eyes narrowed. <sighs> Fine. Have you got any more work for me? I might have one or two things that need done. Come downstairs with me after I finish my pint. Garrett nodded in false agreement. But despite his mate's warning, the thief knew that he couldn't leave well enough alone. Because he already had bitten off more than he could chew. Guinevere was within him now. And he had to see her again and no amount of danger would dissuade him. She was worth the risk. Guinevere walked the empty docks of the foundry. She was cold, alone, and positively terrified. She wasn't ready for this, even though she needed to be. Garrett had held up his end of the bargain, and she was trained. Now, she had to face the fact that she was on her own. Whatever transpired from here on out, was her own decision. But the young woman only wanted one thing. And it was something that she could never have. The love of her thief. As she walked, the waves rolled in and out of the harbor, and a muggy spray of brine hit her unsuspecting face. From behind her, the sound of small, clumsy feet caught her attention. She looked over her shoulder in time to see an unruly black kitten walking towards her. 
smitten, Guinevere knelt down to meet him. The kitten leapt into her awaiting lap with a tiny mew. <coughs> Guinevere gingerly clasped the baby with both hands and held him up to her face. He began to squirm, frightened and unsure of the large creature which now held him captive. Hey, don't be afraid. I won't hurt you. She crooned. The kitten hissed and swatted at her with his short claws, desperate to get free. Guinevere laughed gently and put him down. Once he could feel the earth beneath his paws again, the kitten's confidence was renewed. He backed up, and the fur on his back stood on end. He hissed and spat at the young woman, eager to intimidate her. When she continued to watch his antics, Unfazed, the kitten sat on his back haunches and huffed, clearly unhappy with the outcome of his surprise attack. Guinevere extended her hand to his slick black pelt. His body tensed as she began to stroke, and his tiny needle-like fangs nipped at her arm. She smiled at the tiny creature whom was trying so hard to be vicious, yet whose bite felt as painful as a small pinch. <laughs> You're a feisty one, aren't you? I wonder where your mother is. You're still far too small to be out of her sight. The kitten looked up from his attack and mewed again. <coughs> he backed up as she stood, and his green eyes flashed through the darkness of the alleyway. He began to follow her. Sensing this, Guinevere turned around and met his gaze. Would you like to come home with me? She asked. The tiny creature sat back down and began to meow loudly. <coughs> with a light chuckle, the young woman picked up the feline. And this time, he didn't try to scratch her. Basso grinned with excitement as he watched Guinevere finish drawing out the layout of the Simmons family manor. And right over here is the safe. My father has at least two men guarding it at all times, so you'll need to be prepared. As she pointed to the crudely drawn layout, her hand trembling slightly. Wonderful, just wonderful, kiddo. Anything else I should know? Basso asked greedily rubbing his frigid hands together. Guinevere bit her bottom lip. No, that's all of it. Oh yeah. <laughs> You've done a great job, Gwenny. I'd tip my head off to you. If I wasn't so embarrassed by this damn balding. He chuckled. <laughs> it's the thought that counts. Guinevere sighed. The boxman could tell that something was bothering her. His suspicions were confirmed when she looked up into his face with worried eyes. Uh, uh, Basso? Yeah? You're not... You're not thinking of sending Garrett in there, are you? Don't worry so much about him, Guinevere. Garrett's the best in the business. He'll be fine. Guinevere's heart sunk at his response. She gulped down a heavy wad of tension, and withdrew her hands from the desk. She watched as Basso shoved his new map within the topmost drawer. You're right. <laughs> he is. <laughs> she laughed weakly, but she couldn't dismiss the growing terror within her heart. You know, he's taken a real liking to you. The young woman's eyes flew open at the unexpected comment. Her cheeks flushed a bright pink. He told you that? Guinevere asked, hopeful. Basso shrugged. More or less. Guinevere's body shook with emotion. This was all just too much for her. She wanted nothing more at that moment than to see her thief again. It had only been 24 hours, but it felt like years. There was nothing beneath her at that moment. Nothing that she would not do. If it meant that she could feel Garrett hold her again, it would be worth it. 
Not even in a sensual way. She just wanted to be near him. She needed it. Such feelings of powerful lust were still foreign to her, and they both intimidated and delighted her. More powerful than any craving, any drug, or anything else that she had ever experienced before was her need for him. Her body began to grow restless, and a deep yearning consumed her. She wanted to run, wanted to fly. It was then that Guinevere realized just what she was feeling. For the first time in her entire life, she felt alive. Kid, you okay? Barso's words found her ears and grounded her. Guinevere turned and smiled softly at him. Uh, I'm fine, but I should really be getting home. As she started to exit the hovel, she stopped and looked down at her boots. Thank you, Basso. I know that map was all you really wanted out of me, but thank you, regardless. The boxman's eyes widened. She knew. How could she possibly have known? While it was true that he had taken a shining to the girl, Barso had never lost sight of his true motives. Robbing the Simmons family completely blind. As he began to question himself, he called to Guinevere, halting her one last time. Guinevere, if you knew all of this, then what could you possibly be thanking me for? Guinevere turned around, an unnatural radiance filling the lonely room with a serene peace. Her green eyes sparkled. For giving me a chance to meet Garrett. 